Kelly. Uh, coming to you for your concluding statement, Mr. Ekane Priestley, uh, we were talking the uh, anti-gay law in Uganda. We are looking at the reaction from the World Bank uh, taking a very uh, stern decision of halting uh, new funding for Uganda, and we are conversant of the implications. So the question is, how can uh, the uh, World Bank, because for now, Uganda is relying on the World Bank for funding and other partners, you know. So how can the, com the, the government or the leadership of Uganda and the, the World Bank uh, uh, engage, or what ways can they use to engage constructively in trying to see how they can actually uh, bring a, a solution to, to the problem at hand and see how they can st maybe uh, discuss on ways which will not uh, derail maybe even private sector investment in the country. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think um, um, with the current situation, um, diplomacy, uh, the, the idea of diplomacy comes to the fore because uh, this is huge. This is huge uh, financial cuts from Uganda. And I think instead of uh, seeking for a counterforce, uh, 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 financial counterforce, maybe relying on other new uh, bilateral or multi multilateral partners, I think um, it would be in Uganda's interest um, to engage in some sort of um, negotiation with this uh, financial uh, institution, which is the uh, World Bank, um, not necessarily to coerce, not necessarily to um, uh, negotiate on their terms. But like I said, um, it is also important for a body like the African Union to engage in talks with uh, uh, the government of Uganda um, to review, uh, to review certain internal laws, not necessarily infringing on their sovereignty, but to review certain internal laws, which uh, uh, should have a respect for human dignity. And like Mr. Paseka said, and I found that really interesting, um, the only way we can build a better Africa, which engages the world in, a, in, 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 in multi-dimensional ways, is to adopt an Afrocentric mentality, which is not idealist, but an Afrocentric mentality in politics, in government, in economics, in, uh, in, in, in culture, that would be able to, um, that would be able to engage the African people together in a union. And it's the only way to be able to um, um, uh, join the, 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 the global banquet on uh, on terms of, of legitimacy. And the people of Africa need to understand that Afrocentricity uh, is not a counterforce to Afro pessimism, or it's not, a, or it's not necessarily uh, a, 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 a counterforce to Western, um, um, uh, Western uh, um, ideologies or Western, um, uh, uh, I don't know, colonialism. Yeah, it's a way proper to us. It's us re reviewing who we are as a people. It's us reviewing our slave story, our colonial story, our historiography, uh, ourselves, ourselves as a people, in order to be able to engage the world. So um, I think it is important because as much as we we are we are we are hampering on on like as the content, the problem is not the law. The problem is the content of the law because today. Uh, we would find African countries uh, emerging with certain laws, and then we 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 take it under the guise of a color of a of a Western attack. No, it's just like you would you would uh, you would see a country sanctioning people who are against uh, female genital mutilation. That is that is barbaric. Female genital mutilation is barbaric. It's not because and some people would tell you it's an African way. No, it's barbaric in every sense of. of, of every sense of the term, just like killing a homosexual is barbaric in the 21st century. So it's, I think it's, it's more about interpret, interpreting the laws and finding, uh, finding a certain ground that is beneficial to the people of, 
Uganda and uh, who beyond existing in Africa exist 